Okay, so here's our geometry, and it's uh, a wave guide, uh, and we can turn on transparency, and we can see that inside of this wave guide, there's a little block of dielectric. So what we're going to model here is the heating up of this wave guide, uh, and the, what happens when we include the effect of that dielectric block. Uh, and I'm going to begin by uh, at the modeling by adding some physics. So I'll come to the model branch, right click on the model branch, and choose add physics. So I'm going to come down here to heat transfer, and we'll choose the predefined microwave heating interface, which is going to solve for the electromagnetic waves as well as the temperature fields. So I'll add that physics to my model, and I'll move on to the next page in my model setup. And I have a bunch of choices here, uh, and the two that I'm going to talk about here are the frequency stationary and the frequency transient. Uh, so, of course, the, uh, the electromagnetic problem, we would solve that in the frequency domain, and the thermal problem, we could solve that in either a stationary sense or a transient sense. So we want to know, in this case, how the uh, temperature field is varying over time. We're going to solve the... Uh, uh, solve the electromagnetic problem though in the frequency domain. So I'll solve this as frequency transient and we'll be solving these two governing equations in two different temporal senses. So I'll go ahead and finish up the setup here and we now have a microwave heating branch uh, within uh, the model builder window. Uh, the first thing I'll point out here is that this microwave heating model is active in all of the domains, all four of the domains that, were, uh, that are in our model here. We can turn on transparency a little bit to see these. But in fact, we don't want to solve for microwave heating in all of the domains because the metal waveguide, obviously the skin depth is very small relative to the structure. So we actually don't need to solve for the microwave equations within the waveguide. We only need to solve for the heat transfer equations. So I'll set up a heat transfer, heat transfer in solids physics only uh, in uh, the waveguide itself. So now uh, we are only going to be solving the thermal governing equation uh, in those domains. The heat source, of course, is uh, still going to be generated by the electromagnetic problem. So now uh, we, uh, we do need to also remember to set up some material properties. So I'm going to come to the materials branch and open up the materials browser. I'm going to use some of our built-in materials uh, and I'll, uh, I'll start by uh, assigning uh, air. So I'll add the air material to the model and I'm also going to add uh, aluminum to begin with uh, and uh, I'll assign the aluminum to the waveguide itself. So we'll notice here that all of the material properties that we need, the specific heat, the density, the thermal conductivity, are already defined. So the air property is now going to be assigned on all of the uh, inside of the waveguide. And then we'll go modify that dielectric region uh, in a little bit. Uh, so now we need to, uh, to assign some boundary conditions here to this problem. And we can assign uh, some electromagnetic boundary conditions. And I'm going to use the impedance boundary condition uh, on all of the boundaries. So it's going to automatically select all of the boundaries for the electromagnetic problem, that is a waveguide. I'm going to deselect here the, uh, the faces where we're going to apply the port boundary conditions. And we now want to simulate like a thin layer, thin metallic layer. And I'm manly, manually going to type in here a permittivity uh, permeability and a user-defined electric conductivity. I'll choose some high electric conductivity to represent a good uh, metallic coating on those faces. On the electromagnetic side of things, we still need to assign some, uh, uh, some excitation boundary conditions. So we'll assign a port boundary condition on this face and we'll set this up as a rectangular port with wave excitation and we'll be uh, putting 200 watts through this waveguide. So I'm putting in a TE10 mode in this port and I want to put in an output port at the other side. And that one will also be a rectangular T1. 
TE10 port. So now that we've completely defined the electromagnetic problem, uh, we also need to define the thermal problem. Uh, the heat load in this case is going to be completely via the boundary heating, via the skin effect here. Uh, and uh, this, will, uh, this is what's going to cause the model to heat up. But we also uh, do need to specify some cooling. So we want to set up a heat transfer boundary condition. And we'll choose convective cooling. And we'll choose all of the domain or all of the boundaries of our waveguide. And I'll grab all of those boundaries. And I'll set up a heat transfer coefficient of 5 watts per meter squared Kelvin to an ambient temperature of 293, or about 20 degrees C, ambient temperature. And in terms of the meshing, just to keep this demo nice and short, I'm going to set up a user-controlled mesh. And I'm going to customize here the element size. And I'm going to be solving this at a, uh, a free space wavelength of 3 centimeters. So I want to have about, in this case, to keep the analysis nice and short, I'm going to have about four elements per wavelength. So I can go ahead and mesh this part. And I can go ahead and set up the study. So I'm going to solve this at a frequency of 10 gigahertz. And I'm going to solve this from uh, the thermal problem for a time span ranging from 0 to 60 seconds. And I can output the results every 10 seconds. So with that, the problem should be completely defined. And we can go ahead and solve the problem. And see that most of the heating is going on right in the inside. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a selection to the results. And we can just post-process what happens uh, on the, uh, the dielectric block itself here. Uh, we'll actually want to look at, uh, at the surfaces uh, of that dielectric block. I'm just going to grab all of those surfaces. And we can take a look at that. And we can see uh, that our dielectric block uh, has heated up uh, about 50 degrees C over a minute. Uh, so now, of course, we could continue our analysis and make other studies. But this is a, a, a typical microwave heating analysis where we've considered electromagnetic, the electromagnetic problem, and the thermal problem. Uh, so uh, with that, uh, I'll finish this demo up.